between the noises, the voices, and the conversations, it was every day. I couldn't explain in a hundred years. In the midst of our excavating into the ground, we ran into a bunch of bones. When I came here for my meeting with them to set this whole thing up, talk to a hostess that was at the front, she said that this place is haunted. We're gonna do isolations tonight. We're gonna do it periodically throughout the night, and those isolations will be in the same spot every single time. The hostess that I talked to and the rest of the staff have named the spirit here, Juliet. My name is Zach Wenzel, and for the past 10 years, my crew and I have been investigating the paranormal. Spending overnight in some of the most haunted locations to try and debunk claims of spirits and manifestations, I'm shaking while right also now. trying to find proof of the afterlife. Along the way, we've experienced terrifying unexplained phenomena, and have further learned the truth behind life after death. These are our journeys, our adventures. We're not afraid of you. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are Blood Moon Paranormal. Welcome to Joliet, Illinois, our hometown, where we started. For the past 10 years, we've been traveling the U.S. to investigate the paranormal. The reality was, we might have ghosts right here in our backyard. This is Juliet's Tavern, an American contemporary restaurant with a history that dates back to the 1890s when it was originally built. From then to now, it's been a multitude of businesses. It was a grocer, possible shoe store, clothing store, a theater, and then a jewelry store. And now it's a restaurant. It was owned and ran by two brothers, uh, Benjamin and Abraham Berkovitz, uh, and it was named the New Star uh, Grocery and Jewelry Store because it was half and half. Then they sold the dry goods and made it a full jewelry store until Ben's passing in the 30s. And then his sons, Sammy and Mortimer, took over. It was still the jewelry store until Mortimer's passing in the 60s. And the store was left to Sam, who then tried to give it to his son, Mark. In 1982, though, Mark was killed in a car wreck. And then Sammy passed a few months later. The store was then passed on to Sammy's other son, Harlan, who already owned his own business and then sold it to his ex-wife Ellen and her then husband Dan. So in 1907, the Berkovitzes did own a jewelry store over on Collins Street. Um, and it was mentioned in the paper that in 1907 that Abraham, the brother of Ben, uh, had been accused of stealing a ring from a woman who lived in town. And the woman went to the police, a detective, to go over to the Berkowitz's jewelry store with her to confront Abraham. The detective asked him if he had stolen the ring, and Abraham said that, no, I didn't steal the ring, and I'll have you thrown out for accusing me of such. The detective stayed, and Abraham swung on the detective. And then in 1909, Ben was taken to court for disorderly conduct for fighting with a patron over an alarm clock that was left at the Berkowitz store. Some sources that say that the Berkowitz had a daughter that passed away at the age of 10 by the name of Rebecca. Sometime between 1960 and 1980, Newstar had moved out of the building into a new location. The time between it being Newstar Jewelry and Juliet's Tavern is a little washy. What we found was that it was converted from Ritmo Nightclub to the department in the mid-2000s. It's a place, a gathering place, that's going to be opening up later this year, right at the corner of Cass and Chicago. Derek Brancheski came to us uh, with an idea for an upscale restaurant and martini bar. These projects are difficult. Looks like Derek's going to open up the department 
uh, this fall. So we're we're very happy and thrilled and in Joliet and especially downtown Joliet. We were actively looking for a, a new bar, a new place, more of an upscale place to open. And we were looking at this building and it just, it wasn't big enough for what we wanted to do. So we ended up buying the buildings next to it. And we wanted a skylight put into the building. But as we took the roof off, one of the architects came in and said, this wasn't a building. This was literally an alleyway. And it wasn't until we opened it all up and we started cleaning off the brick that we saw this sign that I believe was North Carolina Tobacco Company. And that was an exterior wall, but that's where the police and fire department would pull up their, their horses they would fill up the containers, and when then there was a, a fire, they would go and take the horses to wherever it was and use that water to put the fire out. And that was the alleyway that they would tap into the water system, which kind of sparked the idea of the name being the department. What really got strange is we didn't have enough room for the elevator because we had to make it handicapped accessible. So we're literally, our laborers were with with sludge hammers and five gallon Home Depot buckets and be sitting there just constantly just bringing up pebbles of water. It was ridiculous and it took us forever. But in the midst of our excavating into the ground, we ran into a bunch of bones. And we didn't know what kind of bones. Well, I mean, I'm sure I'm not going <laughs> to get in trouble over it now. But at that time period, we were on a pretty tight schedule to get the place open. And we knew that if we brought this to the Historical Society or the police department, a, a full-on investigation would have happened. It would have probably held up our construction for weeks, maybe possibly months. We cleaned them off. We stored everything in their patches to the side and, um, and kept them separate. And we eventually opened the department and that's when I ended up turning the bones in, which it turned out they were just, they were simply feline bones. So thank God, you know, there was you know, no, no human remains that were there, but it was just still enough to freak everybody out that the fact that there was these undercover bones that were down there. And regardless of any of that happening, the department opened in January, I think of uh, maybe February of 06. I swear there was never a time that I felt like I was alone in that place. I mean, I had cameras at every inch of that entire place, inside and out. And I'm like, what is this noise coming from? And like weird echoing noises coming down from the elevator shaft. But my sister was always who ran all the events, Mandy. She was really good at putting everything back in order so it would be ready to go the next day. But I'd go up there and be like complete chaos. And I do remember having conversations with her and my other managers saying, why did you leave this place just like a, a ruckus? You know that we've got an event later on today, now I have to do it. And both you know, Mandy and Greg, who was one of my managers, and was like, what are you talking about? We put everything back perfectly. Yet, I would look at the cameras, I saw no movement, no anything. I actually saw them putting everything back. But by the time I went and heard everything and went upstairs by myself, all the couches, chairs, different stuff, were upside down, all over the place and like nobody would have naturally have done that like they would that would have just been a jerk move cameras only pick up when there is i remember having it set at 60 pounds so it's like a 60 pound dog would trigger the camera to go on so whoever was moving or did all of this weighed less than 60 pounds or they just moved by themselves but literally zach that is one of about two dozen just weird incidences that would happen but on a regular basis between the noises the voices and the conversations it was every day what i'm telling you is there's a lot of unexplainable things that happened that i couldn't explain in a hundred years when i came here for my meeting with them to set this whole thing up uh, i talked to a hostess that was at the front i told her we were filming this documentary and she said that this place is haunted she said that she's experienced stuff here and uh, unexplained stuff. The hostess that I talked to and the rest of the staff have named the spirit here. 
Juliet. Is the spirit's name actually Juliet? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But I guess if they refer to her as Juliet, then we'll probably refer to her as Juliet as well. We're going to do isolations tonight. Pretty much what's going to happen is we're going to do it periodically throughout the night, and those isolations will be in the same spot every single time. And we're going to do it up in the study. Uh, the order of our isolations is going to be Carly, it'll be Grace, <laughs> then it'll be Emily, and then I'm going to finish us off at the mm-hmm. end of the night with the final isolation. You guys ready? Yeah. I'm excited. Let's, let's do it. All right, guys, so we're starting our isolations here at Juliet's Tavern, and uh, Carly is going to be going first. Hi. So this is where we're doing isolations tonight. Okay. You ready? I think so. Good. Yeep. Yeah. Hi. Hello, if anyone is here, my name is Carly. It's an honor, honestly. Um, and the fact that I technically get to be the first to actually talk to you is even more of an honor. Oh, hello? Did you? The camera just shut off? That's weird. That is weird. It definitely shouldn't have. I heard a click. What was strange about this is the fact that the camera across the room didn't just shut off, but it went into a hard reset, which we've never had happen before. This could simply just be a camera malfunction, but we aren't 100% sure. What do you think? Okay. Hopefully well, it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Um, I paused your time, so you still got 14 minutes. You're good, you're good. I don't know if... If you made that camera shut off, can you make this cap all go off again? Oh! Hi. You really are getting used to this equipment, aren't you? That is actually awesome. Okay, I'm gonna actually move Bobby over because I don't know if the rum pod is blocking it. That was awesome, thank you so much. I mean, it seems like you already were using some of the equipment, which is insane and amazing that you already are used to that. You, you, yeah, thank you, wow. That is amazing. Maybe I'll just run the SP7 Pro. I don't know if that was radio or not. It's fresh air. Is anybody in here with me? Can you tell me your name? Dude, I can't tell if it's radio or if it's like actually someone trying to talk. If, any, if anyone is here with me, can you make that, can you touch that cat ball again? I find these responses to be interesting. Some of them sound like they might be just radio stations coming through. However, some of them are directly responding to Carly, which makes me question if this is truly a spirit or not. Maybe I'm just using this thing wrong, but all I'm hearing is like radio. And if those are responses coming through, that's actually crazy because I've never heard that many or that long and clear before. So, well, thank you for talking to me, whoever did. Again, we're going to be investigating periodically throughout the night. Don't be scared to talk to us. All right, so Carly just finished her isolation. So now we're headed back downstairs to investigate together for a little bit. And then next up, Grace is going to be doing her isolation back up here. So, yeah, let's investigate together for a little bit and then back to isolations. All right, spirits, people, if there's anyone here with us, kind of introduced you to a cold start with Carly's isolation upstairs, but we're here tonight to try to talk to you, get to know you a little bit. So if you're here with us, this is your opportunity to talk, tell your story. So feel free to come on down here, come over here. If you're down in the basement, come on up. It's a good opportunity for you to communicate. There's a lot of devices here that I'm sure you've never seen before. We're not here to harm you, we just want to get to know you. And that's it. Yeah, so uh, we got quite a few devices here right now. Um, this one right here, this is called an Obulus 5. This 
has a dictionary of words in it, and spirits are said to be able to use their energy, or EMF, to manipulate, just said chloride, uh, manipulate uh, the dictionary to spit out words on the screen as they wanted to. Uh, this is a cat ball, you kind of already saw this in action. Just gonna move it, tap it, it'll start going off. That one's going off like crazy. I think that might be faulty, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, just walking around. That's Bobby right there. <laughs> uh, he has a capo on his head, um, so it's just motion activated. It's a K2 meter, so that picks up on EMF. This one right here is a REM pod, so if anything comes in proximity of the sensor on the top. You have the music box as well. Oh, the music box. There's a music box that if they stand in front of that, it's motion censored, and uh, that'll play a music box. And then there's a flashlight over there, and oh, <gasps> yo, hi, dude, what? <laughs> Did we catch you coming out of the bathroom? That was That's pretty crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, no dude! Way. Can you turn it off? Thank you, bro. That was pretty it wild. It was like it was like all demonstrated for you. Yeah, so so Whoa. spirits are said to be able to. It's a it's a twist mag light, so spirits are said to be able to twist it on. I think it's something to do with the coil inside of them connecting the energy to each other, the battery to the coil, making the light turn on. That's just me. Uh, some people believe different things, but it just demonstrated how that works and what that's gonna look like. So that's pretty incredible. I just got, I just got, <laughs> I just got chills. That's so, that's that was so awesome. Cool. That's pretty awesome. So it's a little twist light. So they just had to twist it, it turns on. Oh, so the living. The living. We are the living. Yeah. <laughs> we are the that's living. true. If that was you that just talked on there, can you make the flashlight go off? Just to confirm that you're here with us? Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> haunted. 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 Yeah. I mean, show us. Show us that this place is haunted. I heard there's a spirit named Juliet here. Can Juliet come and talk with us? Play with some of our equipment? Oh. Hi. Can you try something else out? Can you try another piece of equipment? If you're a boy, can you make that flashlight go on? If you're a girl, can you make the flashlight go on? There's many of us. Ah. That's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Is there many of both girls and boys here? I was going to suggest uh, us to see. Ooh. Ooh. Can I do it? What uh, us sweet grade should I do? Uh, let's do 50. 300. Yeah, no. My name is My Margaret. Name is Margaret. Oh, hello, Margaret. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. So right now we're doing an Estes session. So a spirit box is hooked up to a pair of noise canceling headphones. So Carly can't hear what we're saying, but she can hear what the spirits are saying through the radio waves. So that means that any question we ask, if there's a response, she's gonna say it out loud. And that might actually be a spirit responding to us. But there could be also some random stuff that comes through as well. We don't know what's gonna happen, but hopefully something good comes Do from it. Do you understand? I understand. Do you understand? Come talk with us. Carly can hear you. That was me. Mine? Right is the... Or said nine. I think it said mine, though. Right is the flashlight turned on. Hey, Miss Margaret. If you're here with us, can you show us? Or do you prefer being called Juliet? Is Juliet here? I think what the only thing she said so far is nine. Mine right? or nine. Mine or nine. nine. talking, but it's not here, like, at all. Notice how every time... She says something in the... The, the light goes off. Yeah, that's a little weird. Can you move the flashlight? My name is Margaret. Again. Margaret, just for a double confirmation, can you maybe say it through that black box? Excuse outside? me? And that's weird though because it's after I tried calling her Juliet again. It said that my name is Margaret. It's rare that Spirit Talker will spit out the same word twice within a single session. While we do have to take this response with a grain of salt, do you think it's possible that the spirit they call Juliet is actually someone named Margaret? What do we say we do our next isolation? Okay. Yeah. So we just did some investigating together and now we're heading back upstairs to set Grace up for her isolation. How you feeling? I'm so excited. 
So yeah, this will be our second isolation of the night. Carly started hers at about, I would say eight o'clock. Now we're doing the second one at about 9.20. So there's been an hour difference between the two. We're just gonna see how the energy has changed if stuff wants to start talking to us now, now that we've done our introductions and everything. So let's see what happens. Thank you. Let me know when my time starts. So, hi friends, my name is Grace. The same person is downstairs. I'm gonna start this beer. You're up here with me, can you come talk to me? It sounded like it said, do you have anybody? And then it said, no. Is this Margaret? This sounded like it sounded like quick or like my name. Hi there. Hi there. Sounds like somebody's stopping around. Are you guys stopping around downstairs? No, we are not moving at all. I just came. Okay, cool. So it sounded like there were stomping, like three times, like boom, boom, boom. All right, turning it off. I'm just gonna sit in silence, okay? All right, your isolation is over. We're gonna come grab you. Ooh. Well, let's uh, head back downstairs, start investigating together again. Yep. All right. You ready? We're going to do two uh, EVP sessions, uh, both at the same time. If there's anyone here with us right now, uh, we have these two devices right here. Uh, me and Carly both have the one in our, in our hands. These devices will be able to hear you if you talk to us. All you got to do is just talk right into them and we'll hear you. So we're going to ask you some questions. Feel free to answer them. Unfortunately, there were two EVP sessions on two different recorders. We didn't receive any responses. Oh, yeah, we can, we can pop fast this real quick. Let's try it. Alright, well... It's like a male voice, but it's like super choppy and fast. That's what you were getting. Yeah. It's like it said away with him. Away with who? Who are you talking about? A female voice. Who do you want to go... At the beginning, it was like a male voice that said away to Rockdale. And then away to Rockdale? A female voice. It's like, don't leave. What's in Rockdale? Rockdale's the town over. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. Is there anyone here trying to see a musical? It sounded like a female voice said, I'm trying to talk. So you gotta push a little harder, try a little harder so we can try to try to understand you. Because we want to talk to you, we want to get to know you. Your jewelry store is still around to this day. It's in a different building, but it's, it's still New Star Jewelry. How do you feel about that? You've built a legacy. It's like it said something. The details are... A lot of the responses seemed very incomplete. After spending some time here, we thought now might be the best time for Emily to do her isolation. All right, so right now we are heading back upstairs to the study room, and uh, Emily is now going to be doing her isolation up there. How are you feeling about it? I'm excited. And if you haven't yet, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Tell us what your favorite piece of evidence that we captured tonight in the comments below. Uh, we wanna hear what you enjoyed and what you liked most about this video. So yeah, let's go set up Emily's isolation. I don't know if that's where you want the cat bowls, but I just put them there. Hey, yo. Hello? Can you do that again? Oh. Hello? Please say JK. Thank you. All right, everyone. Hi. You like the music box? For the next three minutes, the music box periodically started playing randomly. Sometimes wind can cause this to happen, but at this time, we didn't feel any drafts in the area. However, Emily thought it might be best to move the music box after this happened. If that's you interacting with the music box, can you... Okay. Can you stop with the music box? Can you come up to this right here and say it's you or your name or... Give me some sort of other interaction to know. 
I'm going to turn the music box off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I moved the music box. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, continued. I mean, if you, yeah, we're still continuing, even though I moved the music box. Would you like me to turn on the spirit box? I can talk to you and I can hear your voice. Who was setting off the music box earlier? Huh? Can you tell me how you're feeling right now? Flashlight. The flashlight just went off. Thank you. That was really cool. Thank you. I'm going to turn it off, okay? So we can do some yes or no questions with the flashlights. Let's do... Yes for that flashlight that's by the windows, and no for the flashlight that's by the lamp, the one that went off earlier. Okay, that was a quick little on-off. <laughs> All right, yep. Or wait, are you saying no because you don't want to? What I found interesting was that after this no response, the activity in the room completely leveled out and Emily received no more responses during her isolation. So once again, it was time to investigate together. All right, so right now we just finished up Emily's isolation and we're gonna be staying upstairs this time instead of going downstairs to investigate more of this area and uh, see what we can get. That was the turn on word. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Thank candle. Thank you, Candle. Oh. Oh, shit. oh, wow. As I said, Candle light turns, on. light turns on. Dude, yeah. what the heck? Thank you. It likes light, I think. Anybody up here that wants to talk to us? I hear the choppy male voice. I hear it. Yeah. I also heard a choppy male voice. Did I forgot you? to mention that. Yeah, well, it's a scary dark voice. Yes, it was very deep, right? It you heard it too, it was very yeah. deep. Yeah, well, there's. I was in my isolation, there was one where it sounded like it was growling. Yes, at me. yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Who's the male that we keep? All of us have heard tonight. No. Uh oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> apparently you are a prominent enough person to where all of us have heard you. Oh. Stop. This is <laughs> weird. <laughs> I'm so confused. Was that on cue with my flash? It was uh, maybe a second after after? after it happened, yeah. Or two seconds or so, but still. I see it too. Do you? Oh. Are you the one that turned it on? That's cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? So obviously people can see it's not mm -hmm. my camera doing it. No. I mean, I don't even know how that would happen, because it's not like it's... Connected? It? Yeah. It sounded like it said, hey, warden. Bro. Um, stop. What's strange about this response is that this building was built around the same time they would have been building the women's section of the old Joliet prison, meaning that if there is any limestone here, it would have been mined by prisoners during that period. This might be a stretch, but could the warden of the prison be involved with this building? Dude, my neck hurts. Oh, oh, bro. <laughs> it's like, here, let me help you so you can see. Thank you. Hey, because anytime we've, like, said something, kind of in, like, terms of, like, seeing, watching, mm -hmm. it turns it on, kind of. Yeah, like, hey, you can see here. Can you, can you turn that on? I need to see something on the ground. Go reach for it. I was helping. Stop. You were helping. Can you help again? Can you turn that on so I can grab this? Yeah, we're, I can't see the cap ball. I can't ball. see it. Where's the cap ball Where at? Where is it? Can you help me by turning that light on so I can see it? Can you help me, can you turn the light on so I can grab this? We saw it. I think they know we're fitting. They're out. They know, they know, <laughs> they all are. right, all right. They're like, we saw it in the dark, so can you. <laughs> right. Well, they know, they. Yeah, they know the game we're trying to do. They take. know. You guys are gonna leave us with more questions than answers. That's okay, that just makes me have to come back. That is bright. Ooh. Yeah, that's like all the way. I'm sorry, I couldn't help. It's okay, you're helping us enough. Because that means we have to come back. Mm -hmm. We'll just come visit you. 
It's the lettuce. It's the lettuce. <laughs> That's felt like a tap on my shoulder right here. Actually, a cool breeze kind of came through. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I've been. Yeah. Feeling, yeah. I've been feeling the cool breeze because honestly, I'm freezing right now. I I couldn't feel it until just now after I felt like a like a, like a little yeah. tap on my shoulder. Yeah. After this unexplained tap on my shoulder, we decided it was time to head to the next room over, the ballroom. All right, so we're gonna do an EVP session. So if there's anybody in here with us right now, we're gonna ask you some questions. Feel free to talk with us. Come over here, talk into this device right here in her hand. Talk real loud into it, we'll be able to hear you. Once again, no EVPs were captured. However, this time, something happens at the end of the session. Do you enjoy having us here? I don't trust that because of that vibration. Did, but did you hear that noise in the corner over there? Because like no, none of us were moving. Dude, it stopped as soon as I stopped. Recording. I know. <laughs> no, that's. But also, I, I heard don't know. that it was like a little, a little knock. We once again attempted an EVP session, but nothing came through. That's... Let's switch to doing open spirit box. Okay. Can you tell me what you used to fix over here? What'd you fix up here? A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Yeah, a year and a half ago. Can you see to any of the, uh, the Burks? Her Abe? Abe was the one that punched that cop, right? That sounded like said, punch that cop. Punch that cop. <laughs> I heard he came in and said that you were stealing. Oh, did he? Oh, did he? <laughs> But that sounded like a more like a female voice. That was yeah, weird. That's wild. Maybe they're just listening to us telling the story and they're like, oh, did he now? Oh, you want, you want the tea? I got some tea. We spent another 10 minutes asking questions about the building's history from the jewelry store to the theater. However, the responses stopped coming through. It was time for us to move on to the final isolation. Goodbye. Okay, bye. All right, so this is the final isolation of the night. I'm doing my isolation up here. I've been here with you guys all night tonight, so feel free to come and talk with me. Despite all of the anticipation for this final isolation, not a single thing happened. No flashlights, no cat balls, no EVPs, nothing for the entire 15 minutes while I was alone. Hello. What's up? Hi. So, how'd it go? That was about the craziest isolation I've ever had. No way. No, I'm just kidding. Nothing happened at all. For the final portion of the night, we decided to stay in here to see if it would prefer to talk to us while we're together. How do you feel about us all being up here together? I can use my voice. Oh, Bobby. Oh, shit. Whoa. Hey, thank yeah, you. It, I couldn't make out what it said because it said choppy male voice again, but it sounded like it said, You're right, Tim? Maybe? I need help. What do you need help with? We can help you. That's better. I will say, I feel like since. Me doing the isolation here, the vibe is real different. Like, I feel like something is in this room with us right now. Well, and I didn't really feel that earlier. Well, this is kind of going with, like, why we're doing it this way. Yeah. Is we're pretty much kind of going along. Does. It, Pack your stuff. Whoa. Hey. You got a little child's voice said, Hey. Hi. Hi. Hey, Miss Mary. There was a, there was like a, a male voice that was like, who's the child? And then there was another male voice that was much deeper, and it says, the Burks. Shut up. Wait, didn't you say There's no, that's, that's their name. Child? Didn't you say one of them had a child that died? At 10, yes. At 10. While he was saying that, it said, it's me, I'm here. It's you? Is it, is it Rebecca? Is your name Rebecca? Because what if when he said there's that child? It's like, I'm a man of my words. We're saying. family owned. I just got chills. Okay. Yeah. Is this, is this Mr. Burke? If you don't like my offer, 
At this point, we believe this may be residual responses. Echoes of the past from when it was New Star Jewelry. If you're in here, can you touch that teddy bear? The little girl that's in here? Brown hair. Brown hair? It's Lewis. And the detective confronted Abe with Miss Mary. Watch your mouth. He was really aggressive. Do you think that and he that said that he wanted to get them anymore? thrown out. Okay. He wanted them thrown out. He said, I'll get you thrown out. Mm -hmm. Because he was told that he stole the ring. And then he punched the detective. The Berkovitz also went to court with um, multiple other people in town mm -hmm. in reference to slander and defamation. You're missing something. What am I missing? Tell Grace. Tell me what I'm missing. How was that? That was good. That was interesting. That was good. If stuff makes sense or not. Oh yeah. So our investigation at Juliet's Tavern is at an end. And this experience was absolutely incredible. I'm so, so, so thankful for it. You know, a lot of the activity we got tonight seemed a little more residual compared to intelligent. Um, but I think we definitely got a lot of intelligent responses that ended up coming through. Being able to investigate locally is so special. Um, and this being our second local spot we are investigating, I'm so happy it is. Um, this place, from what we've got tonight, I think is absolutely haunted. An amazing local investigation for sure. Honestly, this blew my socks off. You never know going into these places and you never know what to expect. And my expectations were blown out of the water. This place is most definitely active, haunted for sure. I think this one was definitely one of the most interesting ones that we've ever done, especially considering it's like so close to home. I definitely think the spirits here are intelligent. They do have some like residual factors to them, but I definitely think that this place is haunted. Some of the responses seemed like it was almost on command, like the flashlight when I first pointed at it. They're here to interact. They're here to show us um, that they are here. You know, I think this place is definitely haunted. I think there's something here. Whether that be the spirit they've named Juliet or Margaret or any of the Burks family that lived here during the time of operation of the uh, New Star Jewelry, you know, I think there's a lot of energy here and a lot of activity that are coming through these walls that people don't even realize are here. Uh, it has such a full history to it, especially being in such a historical town like Joliet. I definitely think that this one is a good one. It's very hard to tell. I mean, this place is really different compared to like any place we've been to in general. I mean, a lot of stuff happened on cue, which is very shocking. And I feel again, they picked up on the equipment really easily. I mean, right off the bat during my isolation, I had Bobby go off and another cap all went off and the camera shut off on, it was just, it was such a weird night, but it, it's so cool. Maybe more residual than intelligent. Maybe intelligent down here. Residual, I kind of feel was just everywhere else. A good amount of intelligent, a good amount of residual, and it's really cool to get both of those in one. Kind of leaving with more questions than answers. Very intrigued on what we got, and I just want to dig deeper in. But yeah, Joliet has a lot of rich history, has a lot of history to it. And I'm really happy that we get to showcase to you guys some of this history of our hometown. It's a really incredible opportunity to investigate this place. I've been coming here for years. I'm just so grateful and thankful that we got to investigate a local place. You know, being in my hometown and coming to these places, it's so amazing. I mean, Joliet has so many haunted locations, I bet, that we don't even know of or, you know, have the opportunity to go to. I am so eternally grateful for this opportunity to be the team to investigate Juliet's for the first time. And I can't wait for you guys to see this. I'm also so grateful that we had the opportunity to investigate here. The owners are so nice uh, and the food is great. So, yeah. And yeah, I, I think we got great activity and I'm excited to see what happens next at another local place we investigate. Come on in, have some food, it's amazing. The drinks are amazing. The atmosphere is 10 out of 10. Most definitely Juliet's. It was a great night and I will not forget it. So if you're in Joliet, make sure you come to Juliet's, get some food, get some drinks, because this place is absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you come to Juliet's when you're in town and I will see you guys on the next one.